Oh look, I am back. So uh, let's talk about parallel forms. So if you've ever taken a makeup exam in which the questions were not all the same as the test initially given, you have experienced with, um, oh my goodness, what? With different forms of a test. Sorry, my script is like right here so I can look at you while I record, but it doesn't always work great. Okay, so, um, and frankly, in my class, because there are multiple options, everybody's test is slightly different. Um, so, yeah, so if you've ever wondered whether the two forms of the test were equivalent, you have wondered whether there are alternative forms or parallel forms, um, and about the reliability of that test. And so the degree of relationship between the various forms can be evaluated by means of either an alternative form co coefficient of reliability or a parallel forms coefficient of reliability, which um, are often termed as the coefficient of equivalence. So a uh, parallel form reliability. So this is evaluating the error associated with selecting a particular set of items. So um, in other words, this is item sampling error. And so how do you do this? You generate a huge pool of questions. And yes, I realize this is the exact same slide as you saw in the preamble, but I'm reiterating it here uh, and recording it a second time so that you can, it's more likely that you'll get exposure to this. Uh, so what you do is you have to include an equal distribution of equal and difficult items to produce multiple forms. You need them to be comparable in difficulty, otherwise, it's useless because then you are assessing people's performance at different ability levels. Uh, and we'll learn about calculating difficulty in our item response theory unit. So with parallel forms, you have to give them at nearly the same time, and then you're calculating the correlation between those two performances. So this is also referred to um, as alternative forms or equivalent forms. Now, these terms are used interchangeably, but there is a difference in uh, these concepts. So parallel forms exist when uh, for each form, the means and variances of the observed test scores are equal. In theory, the means of the scores compared on parallel forms correlate equally with the true score. More practically, uh, scores obtained on parallel tests are expected to correlate equally with a third measure. Now um, I'll dive into, so alternative forms um, don't have that very strict requirement. It's just a different form, but they are used interchangeably. So, and I think I may have accidentally done that in a recording and I apologize. So the idea here is that by giving parallel forms at different points in time, you can produce an error that estimates both time and item sampling. Um, so this is one of the most rigorous uh, assessments of reliability in use. And unfortunately, because it's really expensive to develop kind of these kinds of tests, that's actually why you have to pay a lot of money for the jury, because it is because they are making an infinite number of tests. Um, with tons of items and doing this all the time. Um, but it is infrequently used in practice because it is expensive and requires a lot of trained statisticians as well as subjects to get those evaluations. So here um, we can obtain estimates uh, to alternative form reliability and parallel form reliability they're similar um, in two main ways to obtaining S compared to estimates of test retest. So both have two test administrations uh, with the same group and the test scores can be affected by factors including motivation, fatigue, intervening effects, all those things are the same. But uh, there is an additional source of error variance in the parallel forms. Uh, and that difference is because of the item sampling, which is inherent to the computation of an alternative or parallel form reliability coefficient. So 
test takers may do sp better or worse on specific forms of the test. And that's not really a function of their true ability, but rather luck um, on which set of items they get for their specific test. Now here, let's assume for our parallel test, we've got X1 and X2, or an X, yeah. Oh, no, I lied, I just did X and X prime, I'm sorry. So for parallel forms, we've got X, which is the original, and X prime, which is the parallel. Here, again, we expect that the means will be the same, as will the, the uh, variance. So we can pop those into our basic model, of uh, the covariance of uh, test performance divided by the variance of the two individual forms to give us an estimate, that proportion, that row of a true score. And so in other words, the correlation between the two parallel forms is the reliability, which is kind of nice. Now I'm gonna talk a little more about alternative forms here. So. Alternative forms are simply different versions of a test that have been constructed as to be parallel. They don't meet the requirements for the legitimate designation uh, because alternative forms are typically just designed to be equivalent with respect to variables and contents, such as content or level of difficulty. Um, but, <laughs> Yeah, so developing alternative forms um, can be really time consuming and expensive. So I imagine what might be involved in creating those and I encourage you to do the same. Now, you have to create tons of items and then get the same people to sit for repeated administrations of an experimental test. On the other hand, once an alternative form or parallel form of a test has been developed, it's awesome for the test user for in several ways. One, it minimizes the effect of memory on the content of previously administered forms. Um, certain traits are presumed to be relatively stable over time. And so therefore we would expect alternative forms, parallel forms, or otherwise to reflect that stability. So as an example, we expect that there will be, insofar as there is a reasonable degree of stability in scores of intelligence testing. Uh, like the Army Alpha got like the longest test retest reliability. The Army Alpha and Beta correlate pretty highly. Um, and many other versions of ability tests have really good, nice stability over time. So now conversely, we wouldn't really expect a lot of stability of a score obtained from a measure of a state. So like state anxiety, so anxiety felt in the moment is not going to be very stable. Um, hopefully, uh, then it's trade anxiety. So states by definition are fleeting. So we would not expect there to be a much stability there. Okay, so that is wrapping up. Um, um, sorry, my notes were, Again, the formatting to get this to record is, is a bit of a pain. So wrapping up parallel forms. Uh, but this time we are wrapping up parallel forms. So I will see you in a bit. Bye.